Welcome to the GCN Cycling Race News Show. This week, the cobbled campaign begins in earnest while the climbers are in Catalonia. We're also in Asia for the Tour Langkawi and in Berlin for the Rad Race. We asked you last week and 63% of you said that you'd be preferring cobbles to climbs. So we are gonna start with them and in reverse order for the one day classics, beginning with Sunday's Gaint Wevelgem, which contrary to most of the European races so far this year, was actually run in some relatively nice conditions weather-wise, 13 degrees, sunshine and little wind. Nevertheless, we had some aggressive racing in both the men's and women's events. In the former, Team BMC lit things up over the first gravel section. First introduced last year, and they whittled down the group, certainly put the hurt on the rest of the peloton. The decisive action, though, came on the second and final ascent of the Kemmelberg. There, Sepp van Mark powered his way up the 23% slopes, which greet the riders at the top and forced a select group clear. A group, though, that contained a fair few sprinters, among them Elia Viviani, and with a number of quick-step teammates there too, their aim was clear. Keep the front group together for a sprint and the second group at bay. And that is exactly what they did. So far, so good. However, Viviani got boxed in with just 500 meters to go and never quite recovered. Peter Sagan, conversely, got his positioning perfect and powered his way to victory. His third win at this race, putting him alongside some of cycling's biggest and best known riders, Cipollini, Boonen, and the great Eddie Merckx. Viviani's disappointment, meanwhile, was plain to see, slumping to the ground after the finish and breaking down into tears. In the women's race, the peloton was completely splintered after each of the main climbs, including the famous Kemmelberg as well. Despite that, a slowing of the pace after these critical sections saw the front group swell back to around 60 riders, which crucially contained a number of top sprinters as well. Jolien Dorr was the big favorite, and her teammates at Mitchelton Scott did a fine job of curtailing the flurry of attacks from the likes of Team Sunweb and Bol Stolmans. Coming into the finish though, it was Ale Cipollini who took control. Many would have expected to see Australian Chloe Hosking going for the sprint herself, but instead she was on lead out duties from Marta Bastianelli. And what a duo they proved to be. Bastianelli took full advantage of her teammates' work and held off door for her biggest win since the World Championship title 11 years ago. The consolation prize for Dor, meanwhile, was the lead in the World Tour standings. Moving on to E3 Prize now, which took place two days previously, and what an extraordinary race we had there. The main peloton was completely obliterated, with 80 kilometers still remaining, partly due to a crash, but partly as well down to a masterclass demonstration from Team Quickstep. They do it year in, year out, but still the way they race at the Cobble Classics is quite incredible to behold. And after some stellar work from the likes of Tim de Klerk and Ilio Kaiser, the rest of the team drilled it up the Tyenberg and over the top, Nicky Terpstra and Eve Lampart forced themselves clear. With over 80 kilometers still to go, it seemed like a suicide effort, but in reality, every single rider in the race was at their limit. And so what remained was a grind to the finish line in what probably was the hardest single day of racing so far in 2018. With 25 kilometers to go, Lampart was distanced from his teammate who was looking ominously strong. And despite the best efforts of a select group that included the likes of Greg van Avermaet, Sepp van Mark, Jasper Stuyven, Oliver Nason, and Matteo Trentin, they weren't able to close the gap. All you could do though was take your hat off to Terpstra and Team Quickstep. That made it six wins from six at the Belgian semi-classics in 2018. The fifth of those was at the Drie Dags of Dapana, which literally translates as the three days of Dapana, which this year was just one day. Yeah, go figure. Anyway, there Elia Viviani took his sixth win of the season in a bunch sprint. In the women's event, there were some pretty horrendous conditions. Wind and rain cut through the peloton. Despite a tough race and the best efforts of Mika Kroger to spoil the party, it did come back for a reduced bunch sprint with Belgian champion Leolian Dor of Mitchelton Scott first across the line. Despite being 1,000 kilometers south of the Cobble Classics, the weather at Volta Catalunya was far from spring-like. In fact, so bad were the conditions that a number of stages had to be shortened and or rerouted. 
Not that breakaway master Thomas de Ghent was complaining, he flew the nest on stage three, and despite a fearsome headwind, particularly in the closing stages, he managed to do what he does so often and hold everyone else at bay. This tweet from team manager Mark Sargent summed it up perfectly. And yes, I don't know about you, but I definitely do know what he means. Quick step, we're at it again on the penultimate stage, which was also won from a breakaway. Max Sashman comfortably beat Diego Rubio Hernandez of Burgos BH. Sashman dedicated his win to injured teammate Petr Vakoc, which was a nice touch, I think. Meanwhile, man of the season Alejandro Valverde was already in the driving seat, wrestling control of the race on stage two, and from that point onwards, the result it was never really in doubt. According to Statman Killian Kelly, is his best start to a season to date. And there we were last year wondering if his career was over. And after the conclusion of the race on Sunday, a tough circuit race in Barcelona won in some style by Simon Yates, you can also add the overall win to Valverde's collection now as well. Nairo Quintana was second and Pierre Latour third, both of whom jumped up a place after a nasty crash took Egan Bernal of Team Sky out of the race in literally the closing kilometers. Our rider of the week though is someone we've yet to mention, Matej Mohoric. Seven top 10 placings in eight stages is something you'd normally expect from Peter Sagan. And although Mohoric lacked a win, it was a mightily impressive piece of riding at a world tour race and thoroughly deserving of the award. Over in Malaysia at the Tour de Langkawi, Andrea Gardini had to wait until the final stage to take his second of the race and his 24th of his career. But the sprint stages were still an all Italian affair. On stages two and four, it was the turn of Team Astana's Riccardo Minali and Luca Pacioni showed his Tour de Taiwan stage win was no fluke on stage six, whilst Manuel Belletti won from a smaller group on stage seven. The big GC shakeup, though, came on day five. There, Artem Ovechkin launched an attack with 25 kilometers to go and never looked back. Riding for the Terran Ganu cycling team, the former Katusha rider faced a barrage of attacks over the remaining three stages, but despite a few frights along the way, he held on for the win. And that made it the first ever GC win for a Malaysian team in the race's 23 year history. And as you can imagine, the locals were pretty pleased with that. And now for something a little different. The Rad Race is a series of fixed gear races which kicked off in Berlin on Sunday. The first ever event was four years ago now and it has been growing in popularity ever since. 164 competitors took part in the last man and last woman standing format on the Mobikart Fun Racing Circuit, just 430 meters in length. It's pretty simple, each race has eight participants and every second lap, the rider at the back gets eliminated. And while the winner goes through to the next round, it's fast, it's furious, it's manic, and it's pretty blooming exciting by all accounts. Dare I say it, rad? No, I can't say that, I'm far too old. Anyway, the winners this year were Matteo Zoli of the Supernova Factory Team and Carla Sommer of Team Schindelhauer Gates. Right, that's all for this week. Next week, we'll be back with the second monument of the year, the Tour of Flanders, plus the Dvars Tour of Vlaanderen and the Grand Prix Miguel Indurain. We'll see you then. In the meantime, we've got a cobbled classics theme going on here at GCN all the way through to Paris Bay. If you haven't ordered your special edition t-shirt yet, there is still time. Click on the link that you will see on the screen right now. And then down here, you can find Matt's guide to what the Cobble Classics are all about.